It's Spring Bowl. Hi Mickey, it's Spring Bowl today. Uh, we're here, we're having a wander in, we're going a bit of an early walk again, the weather's been fantastic. Uh, we're here, it's kind of like there's a grassy bit going down the, the lakefront effectively all the way down so you can see. We're in some sort of gardens now and we're going to see something called the Cloud Gate. Uh, but everyone calls it the Bean, you'll see why in a second. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Uh, we're going to meet uh, Cool Beans there. And then we're going to walk in and we're in the Spingold. And the Spingold today is effectively a day where not many teams get eliminated. Because they're playing down to 64. And the way the format works is we've been put into a sort of group of four. Including this man here, he's in our group of four. And we play a head-to-head -head match. And if you win that match, you make day two. And if you lose that match, you play the loser of the other group of four match. And then if you win that one, you make day two. So basically, one out of four teams is going to get eliminated today uh, from the teams. And I think the top few teams might have been seeded. Uh, so they get to have a day off and things like that. But we're approaching the bean now. The bean is a... Well, we're approaching two beans. We've got bean number one and bean number two. So we're going to have some photo opportunities here. Not only are we being squared, we're now bean cubed today. So yes, let's give it a go. <laughs> okay. uh, so this view is the underside of the bean. You can see all these fantastical reflections going around and see I don't know if you can see me in any of the reflections but uh, yeah we're underneath the bean there we go there's the boys and there's Miki there we go not that Miki's not a boy but you get the idea uh, it's just Just a really nice, really nice day, really nice monument, really nice city. Uh, it's just walked into the venue, it's absolutely mad here, tons and tons of people. Uh, you can hear it all probably, hopefully you can hear me over the sound of all the chatter. You've got a whole room full of people milling, chatting system, ready for the day. So on this floor there is the women's pairs, the senior Swiss teams and then the Spingold. So we're wandering to the room we played in yesterday. Uh, and we're just going to see exactly, I actually don't know the opposition necessarily. I don't think we've got any of the big seats because they've all been exempted. Morning Steph. So hi to Steph. Hi to the vlog, Steph. Hey, yeah. Uh, who you got today? Uh, I think we're playing Tomasini Norton. Oh, yeah, that'll be tough for you. Yeah. And then when you win that, who are they? And then when you win that, who are they playing? No idea. All right, okay, you haven't looked that far. That's good. Good for us. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we've got this. Uh, teams one to eighteen have buys, so the eighteen top seeds have got buys, and then the rest of us are playing down to eliminate. 16 teams, so there are 16 four ways, and this is where we've got the case. So, I'm going to show you the so I'm going to try and work out what team we are, see who we've got, and then uh, let you know. We're here with a team and someone who loves being on video. This is Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Arthur and Nathan, how are you doing, boys? You are on the team, Nathan, definitely, definitely. Thank you. I didn't, I always knew that. And we've got our team captain, Ray. How are you doing, Ray? Doing great. Let's look at, do you think, yeah, I'm looking for the evening session off, so let's do our best. Uh, but we're doing 14 boards, I think, and then we're going to score up, and then we're going to do another 14, and then uh, we're hopefully won, and then we don't have to play this evening. All right? Uh, so we've just finished the first set, and we're nine down, uh, or 20 down. There's a ruling, which I'm just going to go over in a second. Um, yeah, one of the, and I think it's a big criticism, one of the problems with this, uh, some of the American team events is that you hand deal boards. In this day and age, hand dealing boards. When we were playing yesterday in the screens, every table had 
all the boards with their tables, so there must have been 39 copies of the boards in play. Now there are no copies, there's no hand records, so I'm going to have to do these from memory. Um, but And you sit there sh shuffling and you're paying these fees, so not a fan of that. It feels like uh, it's 15 years behind the times. And then when you do Swiss events, which we're not doing a Swiss event, you have to go to the desk and find out where you're playing. It's, it's, it's like it's effectively pen and paper rather than using computers. You're not using bridge mates or anything. So it's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a shame. So obviously any of the records I give you, the hands I give you, I'm having to construct them from memory. Um, but yeah, uh, as it is, yeah. So um, Matt and I are staying and Ray and Mike are swapping out for Arthur and Nathan. And we have either nine or 20 imps depending on the result of the ruling to come. So I'm going to try and get you a hand diagram for this one. I'll move it out of the way so it's going to pop up here in just a second. There it is. So this is your hand. Uh, I'll maybe just do the whole hand. I'll give you your hand. And your hand is Queen Jack Doubleton, Ace One, King to Five, King Queen to Four. Your partner opens a diamond, which is unbalanced. It's either four for four, one or five. Um, and you bid two diamonds inverted, which is forcing. Your partner thinks a while and bids four hearts, which is kickback. You show you have the king of diamonds and the ace of hearts. You've got two key cards, but no queen of diamonds. So you bid five clubs, showing two with no queen. And this goes double on the left, and then partner signs off in five diamonds. Pass. This hand bid six, and the, the, the sign off to five diamonds was slow. And at the time, I think, well, they've got more than they need. They, they've, got to, they've got to think slams on. But if your partner signs off quickly, that's almost certain that you're missing two key cards. So when they think and think and then sign off, they know they're not missing two key cards. They're telling you with their hesitation. So it basically means in this particular case, they can look at the king queen of clubs, know they have the second round club control, and can bid six confidently because they know they're not off two key cards, they're only off probably the ace of clubs, and they know they're not going to lose two quick club, club tricks and they've got everything else. The fact that you've got five diamonds opposite an unbalanced diamond is, is, is probably a reason what you should do initially is show the queen. Once you deny the queen, you can't then go back and show it, I don't think. Um, but if, you show, if, you, if she'd have shown it straight away, they'd have got there, she would have responded five diamonds, beans wouldn't double, this hand would have bid six. Um, and it would have made because diamonds were 2-2 the queen drops double turn with beans so we're waiting on that ruling I feel fairly I'm, I have a bad history with getting rulings but I feel confident that this is going to get ruled back in which case we're only going to be down 9 imps so we've just finished the first match we're waiting for the gong to go up um, beans and I did pretty well I think we've probably got one game swing out and then uh, maybe another one but the rest of the boards we kind of fell our way Maybe it's a really good slam where well, you can make 13 and then four making 11. Um, there was one hand, potentially uh, my fault, we'll see. Um, you have ace to four, sorry, ace king to four, ace queen jack to five, um, stiff queen third. Uh, so you open a heart and this goes pass, pass. So uh, the right hand on your right, having passed initially, bids two diamonds. Uh, so you do make a takeout double and it goes past two spades from beans. So you're deciding whether to raise or not. I'm not bidding four. I think it's a choice between three or passing. And we're vulnerable against vulnerable. And I think what could, what's, what's partner's hands? When, when can you be right to bid four or to be in four spades? Well, whenever the partner's got five spades and a useful card. So five spades in the king of hearts, five spades in the ace of clubs, five spades in the king of clubs, for example. Uh, then it's good. Whenever partner has only four spades and honours in diamonds, for example, so four spades and the king of diamonds, you might not even make two spades. You know, things could break poorly. Thing, you know, whatever. So you're in a you're in a choice, and we generally respond with a five card with a five card major and an ace. We're generally going to respond. So, for example, if Beans had, you know, ace to five, three low, three low, two low, or something like that. He would respond. Obviously, he hasn't got the ace of spades because we've got it, but let's say he's got the ace of clubs and five spades to the ten or something. He might have responded there. So that's one thing to say against for bidding three spades. So what would you do? Um, have a think. Uh, I just passed and Beans made ten when spades broke two, two, and he's got a stiff ace of clubs. Not ace third or anything, but stiff ace of clubs. So we don't have any club losers. We have one diamond loser, one 
heart loser and uh, I think we lost something uh, no he made 11 I think yeah he made 11 so uh, because he made 11 with a hand he's passed with maybe I should invite but obviously stiff ace of clubs is something I didn't cater for if I raise he does he does accept and he would bid for so that was a that's possibly a missed opportunity or a game swing out so we'll see so bad news we lost we lost the second set by four um, there was a hand where uh, we bid to a six spades and uh, I had ace queen fourth ace one jack nine fourth or jack something fourth three low so up and a diamond partner bids a spade and the hand on the right bids three hearts and we're favorable so there are I want to play in spades I've got four card support and there were a lot of hands that Beans can't back in with, so I think it's right to bid three spades any time you've got four here. Um, and partner needs to know that this is like a stretch position, a stretch position where you don't necessarily have to have your bid. Now normally, obviously, if, if this hand passes and you bid three spades, you've got a much stronger hand. But here I've got a minimum opener with ace queen to four spades and a heart control, so I just bid three spades. And I think Matt should um, Q-bid. He, uh, he's got ace, ace, king, queen in the minors, but he's only got a weak no trump himself. Now, obviously, he needs to cater for the fact that I could be strong. So what he needs to do is cubid four clubs. I will then sign off, even though I've got two key cards and a queen. I'm bare minimum, such a bad hand uh, for my bidding, and I could be much better. And obviously, if, I must have something for bidding three spades. So if Matt really wants to know, he can be key card then. But it just needs to be a bit of a balancing act. What Matt did do, he just bid key card, and I shot two in the queen, he was brilliant at six. Um, you know, he doesn't necessarily know which ones are missing, but he's got the heart control. So obviously, if I've got Ace King Queen of Spades and maybe a minor suit card or two, uh, it's going to have play. But it didn't. So yeah, we lost some minutes there. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, so we're on a little break at the moment. So for the evening match, Beans and I are sat at the first set. Every single match, all your team has to play some of it. So we have to rotate in some set. And we Beans and I haven't sat out yet. So we're just taking a break which means we get our lunch break plus like an hour and a half um, while teammates flail around over 15 boards so we're walking down about six blocks to a milkshake place milkshake and burgers hot dogs, hot dogs uh, greasy food yeah so food that makes you happy but not healthy basically uh, oh we get some plastic surgery should we do that <laughs> plastic surgery yes Maybe I can get a tattoo of Gerber on my forehead. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, yeah, so hopefully uh, the team were playing. Seemed nice apparently, but uh, they played filthy and filthy won by 87. Uh, what was it, like 100 to... 110 to 23. 110 to 23, so a much higher scoring match than we had. Uh, yeah, there's some big scores. Some of the matches are a bit unfair, I think. So there's obviously issues with seeding and foreigners don't get seeded right generally here. So foreigners who are good, who haven't played in America before, get quite low seeding. Um, Avery had to play some a team of British pros and Avery was seeded higher than them. Avery and Jack, um, obviously the pros just are much better. They're under seeded effectively. So there'll be a tough job for people to get them. So we'll go back, hopefully, when teammates... Uh, have finished hopefully we have some sort of lead and then we've got 15 balls to try and make day two of the spin gold when the real knockout starts just went to a really greasy restaurant well not really greasy we had a hot dog hot dog was fine chips are really nice actually the crinkle cut chips um this is d -Lev. say hi d -Lev. hello d <laughs> uh what are we playing today ah uh, what are you playing today nothing but you're playing the mini spin gold tomorrow tomorrow and and every day thereafter yeah. hopefully yeah uh, who's your team a uh, bunch of clients. Bunch no, of I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Susan Davison and me, and Jeff Schwartz, and Kathy Williams, and Michael Zhu, and Sharon Adelman. All right. Uh, so you and five points. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you do quite well, so best of luck. Thank you. No worries. I'm looking forward to it. So this is probably the best played hand of the day. I try to include one of these every day as much as I can. Uh, and this wasn't from our match. Our match was... The play from a pro play problem wise was not that great today. I think a lot of it was won and lost in the biddings. This is from Filthy's match. Filthy playing for the McAllister team, and Filthy won against the opponents we ended up beating. And Filthy was sat south. 
So east opens one diamond, south overcalls one no chump. It's a pretty good one no chump overcall. West passes, obviously, and then north south bid to three no chumps. Uh, north bids two clubs, south bids two diamonds, and north's got two. Well, it's got north's got three choices. North can make a non-forcing two heart bids, which shows like five spades, four hearts, and a weakish hand, like trash stamen. North could bid smolen and gain force, but North's kind of got one of those hands that's in between, and so North bids two n, which is an impact to three n, and you might think they're a bit light opposite a one no trump overcall, but and situations here when the when one hand of the defense has got all the points, it's very hard for them to kind of you know back and forth and catch things and finesse things through dummy. Because one hand's got the points, they'll be playing away every time they gain the lead. It'll be East gaining the lead and they'll be playing away from their points. Um, and the second thing is that even that, even if that is the case, South has the points over East, so you're in a much better position. It's a lot easier to make a thin three n when your your strong hand is over their best defensive hand um, because you catch all their honors. So North decided to bid two no trumps as an invite, even though they were a bit on the light side, uh, and they didn't have a major suit fit. Um, and South accepts it and bid 3N because um, Filthy plays the cards well and uh, so we'll see. So uh, this is the case, what happened. So West led the Nine of Diamonds. Oh, I need to press the play button, so let's try again. So let's West, West, West led the Nine of Diamonds. And now you're looking at the North-South hands and you're trying to count your tricks. Now, because we can see the East-West hands, it's a bit easy. But imagine you're in a North-South position and you're trying to count your way to nine tricks because it's teams. So, uh, well, diamonds are easy. The lead's giving you three diamond tricks. So you've got three diamond tricks. You've got the ace of hearts is four, and the ace of clubs is five. You can guarantee setting a second club trick up. That gets you to six. It's likely that the heart finesse is on site. That gets you to seven. But it's probably not likely that the spade finesse is on site. So you want seven tricks, and you need to gain extra tricks. Because they've led a diamond, they've solved your diamond situation, but there's no way you realistically that you can set the hearts up. You need to get to dummy to play heart to the queen. You then need to clear the hearts and you need to get back to the dummy. But if East has the ace of spades, they can always stop you doing that. So that's a bit of a dangerous, risky line to do because we're just not guaranteed to necessarily have a spade entry to the north end. If we are going to have a spade entry to the north end, maybe it's better, rather than trying to set the hearts up, to try and make two spade tricks. What holdings can you have, have to make two spade tricks? So what Filthy did, he just wanted to see the lay of the land. He wanted to see what this distribution is. So he might be right to set the hearts up, might be right to plan spades. But what he did is he rejected the uh, diamond finesse. He played the king of diamonds. He knows it's on side from the lead and the bidding. And he's going to make the jack of diamonds later. So he went with a king so that he could take the heart finesse at trick two. So he plays small, queen, eight. And then what he was aiming to do is to clear the hearts, hoping he could force a spade entry. And when he couldn't, maybe he can do something else. So when he plays the ace of hearts and west through a club away, uh, he, had the, uh, he knows that east has two winning hearts left. So what he did is he, he's aiming to try and make two spade tricks. Now, because East has shown up with probably four diamonds and definitely four hearts, he, he was playing East to have a, a doubleton spade. So there are a lot of doubleton spade holdings that East can have where you can make uh, four spade tricks, but one of those two spades that East has has to be the ace. So what he did is he played the three of spades towards Dummy. He was intending to play the three of spades to the seven, but West inserted the jack, so he ducked it, and he's ducked it. So they played a second diamond, small, queen, ace. And when he played the second spade, he effectively played, it doesn't really matter, the eight of the five. West played low, he underplayed and hits the stiff ace. And the way he's done it, you can see now that his last spade can take the finesse. And because he stays the spade's gone, He's definitely got a spade entry to the north hand to cash these two spades. It then all it relies on him now doing is taking the club finesse once he's cashed the two spades, and he makes his nine tricks. So East can cash two hearts along with the two tricks they've already made. But then when South wins the lead with a diamond, they take the spade finesse, making two spade tricks, and they take the club finesse, which gets them to nine tricks, which is a very very well played hand. Well done, Matt. So teammates are halfway through or close to near the end. I don't know exactly how many boards I've got left of the uh, first set in the second half. So this is a winning in effectively. So you can see behind, they're all the remaining people in the 
uh, in the spin gold qualifier. So we're playing the 69th seed, we're the 60th seed, and this is based on seeding points. Seeding points are based on like master points and results in previous uh, events. During lunch, Filthy gave me a great hand. I'm going to put that in just after this uh, little clip, and so we'll talk about that. Filthy had a hand in there, but again, I've got no hand record, so you're trying to, we were chatting about lunch, and we were having to do these in our heads. I think it's a big problem. I think I do not like it. Um, in our set, we felt like I had lots of four triple threes and five three three twos because some people don't shuffle well enough, and when people aren't shuffling well enough in their pre-dealt hands, sorry, their hand-dealt hands, you're just going to get a lot of flat boards as in flat as in distribution flat uh, so that wasn't great but um, it is what it is and I think they're doing it um, to avoid cheating really to avoid getting information you're not entitled to so if obviously all the tables are playing the same boards like computer dealt boards and someone says oh I have one key card or loudly you know that passes information across and obviously other people around you hear it and that's you know or you lean back and you have a look at what the opponent's got on a different table and that's information you're not privy to so from that point of view it's safe but like in this day and age with the amount of money that you're getting why can't you have different boards for each match or just have like you know six sets of boards in play so that the neighboring tables aren't playing the same boards um so going to nip out and we're just going to have a look at the state in play. I just saw Simon Cope but he doesn't want to be on camera so you find Copy. so here's the state in play and this is you can see yeah uh, so this is our bracket here uh, so McAllister is Filthy's team he won by 87 and so we're playing a team that just lost by 87 imps. They only scored 23 in 30 boards. So we'll see. We'll hopefully um, at least not, you know, come in with some sort of lead. That'd be nice. And then we just have to defend the lead. Uh, but yeah. Good news. Uh, we are 23 up. Well done, Ray. That's Ray looking happy, believe it or not. Uh, do you want to smile, Ray? Yay. There we go. So we're 23 up. Arthur and Nathan brought back a great card, and Ray and uh, Mike had no bad boards. So uh, it looks pretty good. There was like one negative. Um, so it was low scoring set, but uh, we're 23 up. So we've got 15 boards to just hold on to that lead. So and I'll come back to you. When uh, just finished our set. Um, how do you think it's gone? I mean, I think it started off well. Yeah. We couldn't control a lot towards the end, but I don't think they were boards that we necessarily got killed on. Just have to test one of these. Yeah. yeah, so they bid a 6N, making 7. But I think that should get reached at the other table. Yeah, so, and then we bid a 6 diamonds off 1 because we have an unavoidable chump loser. How'd it go? We're just down in slam on in any contract. Yeah, on the last one we've got two. So, yeah, so I'll give the auction uh, and the board on the screen. Uh, Beans opens Beans opens a diamond. I bid a heart up the line. The next I bid two clubs, and I don't quite know what he had for this. But I don't think he had much at all. I think he just had, like, queen jack to six clubs or something. Beans bids 2N, which is like 18, 19 balanced or equivalent. And I'm like, well... If we have a fit, we could make six here, six or something. So, I bid, uh, I bid three clubs, which is like check back stamen, um, and beans bids three spades, which denies three hearts and shows four spades. I'm like, well, okay then. I opposite the right hand, where you know beans has got the ace of clubs and then eight, maybe ace king to five dimes or something like that. We could easily have some easily. And opposite much worse hands, there could be play for it. My singleton club opposite what might be the ace of clubs is built good, so I queued four clubs which agreed spades, and then it goes four clubs, four diamonds, four hearts, so we queue, 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 and when I bid four hearts, I can't have that good a hand because I haven't taken control and bid key card. So I'm limiting my hand when I bid four hearts there. Um, and the same with beans, when beans sits four diamonds, he, he isn't just taking control, he's looking for something. So I queued the king of hearts, and 
I think Beans has got two choices now. He can sign up in four spades, or he could elect to move to Slam. And what Slam does he go to? Well, he doesn't quite know, I think. So he, he gave me an offer, 5N. He says, 5N, pick a Slam. And I'm like, well, if he's doing this, maybe he's got five diamonds still. Maybe something like 4252, two, which is possible. And five diamonds might be better or safer or something like that. So um, I bid five, six diamonds, offered six diamonds. Hopefully, if, if that isn't suitable for beans, he must have at least four. If that isn't suitable, he can correct six spades and he goes pass, pass, pass. And you can see from the north south hands that we're just a point or two shy from this. Uh, if beans had ace king to five diamonds, it would have a lot of play. They led the ace of clubs from the hand that didn't bid clubs, so you can see that the two call, club over call um, was pretty light. Um, so I don't know how that one will go. My guess is, well, that might, I'm almost certainly that will be a swing out. So we'll see how the match has gone in a sec. Uh, so it started off well. The very first board was. Um, uh, a game that can be beaten. Uh, they found the lead to beat it, but didn't follow through. So we led, sorry, I opened one club with the hand you can see in front of you. Uh, the next one bids three spades opposite a pass partner. So it's gone past a club, three spades. Beans had the best hand at the table. He found a double, showing four hearts. And I don't have any other bid to make. So I wasn't ashamed of my opening. I knew I had a reboot, but I'm having to reboot my clubs at the four level, which is fine, because initially didn't have to have clubs. I only had to have three of them. So I bid four clubs. Um, uh, and Beans raises to five. He raises to five, although he's got a really good hand. He's got two jack one spade, and I didn't venture three no chumps, so I haven't got spade stop, and I'm likely to have spade length. And so obviously, if we're just off two spades, it doesn't really, but, you know, he shouldn't really be looking for slam with without spade control here. Um, opposite what is likely a weak no-chump with clubs. So I'm in five clubs and they lead a diamond. Now if they lead a spade, it's easy. I've got time to rough a spade and whatever. I just have to be careful about the trumps breaking. But when they lead a diamond, it looks like they, can, they might have time for a diamond rough. Now I don't know how the spades are situated, but I need to rough a spade. My The third diamond winner is gonna pitch a heart at the end uh, and I'm gonna lose two spades. So I've got to rough this third spade at some point. It's my only line. And then potentially I've got the 10 of clubs to worry about as well because I'm going to have to have the third spade high. Third spade high. So, uh, the lead of diamond I win, and I play a small spade away from the jack in dummy, and uh, the, my right-hand opponent goes in with the king. I'm like, oh, okay, singleton king opposite ace queen to seven. So, this is, this is okay as long as my, the person on lead had two diamonds. They can't, can't sort of cross off from here. Uh, but what they do is they play the queen of spades. Well, they've just let it make now. If they played back a diamond with the queen of spades as their entry, they would have been able to get in and give a diamond rough. But they played back. A, they played the queen of spades uh, before um, playing a second diamond. So it goes queen of spades, small, 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 and then they play a second diamond. I win in dummy. And now I have to worry about clubs being 4-1. It's less likely now. My, the left-hand opponent has six spades and what looks like two diamonds. So there's only really a 4-1 club break if they are... Uh, I've got four hearts as well, and it's something unlike to preempt with four hearts. People just don't do it. So, but I need to potentially unblock just in case that is the case. So when I play, when I crossing back to my hand after winning the diamond, I played the nine of clubs off dummy, uh, and my right hand opponent very kindly played the ten on that. So that was quite easy. Ten, I, I win. I rough a spade high, and I just claim when clubs break. Um, so that was fine. So uh, that was that started off well. Um, three no chumps doesn't make because the spades are wide open and we got to the best game uh, uh, available okay so the bad news six diamonds lost 10 minutes the good news the six clubs won 10 minutes we ended up winning the set and we ended up winning the match by 73 to 39 so we won by about 40 imps roughly um, so we're through to the next day and it looks like we're playing uh, David Goldstein I think we're playing the Wolfson team of Mechstroth, Berkowitz, Wolfson, David Gold, Zia, and uh, a name I can't remember. Apologies to that sixth name. Um, so we're going to tune in early. Yeah, I've just been told by the director to go, so I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to sign off, and I'll see you tomorrow.